The following is a fan based parody. Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and Dragon Ball Super are all owned by Funimation, a Toy Animation, and Akira Toyama. Please support the original. Wait. What do you mean? What? You gave me the wrong. <sighs> they gave me the wrong script. Robert, I'm sorry, dude. They gave me the wrong script. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this is a review of a comic. I don't take what is said as endorsement of the creators of said comic. Um, this video is kind of low quality. If you want slightly better quality, go check out like graded 0.5 or something. Uh, yeah, y'all have a good one and enjoy the video. Hey guys, Starcraft here, and we're continuing on with our Tales of the Dark Multiverse and week as we get into the, um, the twist of a story that means a lot to me. The Death, World Without, and Return of Superman. One, some of the first comics I've ever read. As we go into the Tales of the Dark Multiverse, The Death of Superman, I chose to point out that uh, Lee Weeks did the covers on all of these, and these are all incredible. I didn't talk about it for this one, but I really enjoy it. I wonder if he designed the suit or if Fernandez designed it and he just drew it. Or, I don't know, but yeah, let's just dive right in, shall we? There we go. Once again, we open up with Tempest again. And, well, again, he just gives the summary, much like the Watcher would for what if. As we then open up right in the middle of the Death of Superman with some incredible artwork by um, Brad Walker. This is written by, also, I should point out, this is also written by Dennis Hopeless, who is a good writer as well. Uh, but Hopeless kind of matches what the tone of this is. As, Again, same thing happens. Superman's killed and Lois is so upset. But in this version, Lois was able to still be at least understanding. But in this one, no. Her grief gets to her. Royally. Now, we do have the main here. All the other heroes show up. As opposed to just the regular Justice League. And she chooses out saying, you failed him. Where were you? You know, you let him die alone. Etc. Etc. And this causes her to resent the heroes, as opposed to keeping this. And which is it far off, but she wasn't that bad. Oh, we still have red hair Lex. All that going on as low as upset. We do get a bit of a political moment here about refugees and all that and gun controls. Other than that, though, I'm not going to complain. But also because without Clark's spirit there to pass on, you know, help Jonathan. Jonathan is either dead from the heart attack or at least in a very severe coma. But there, because he said, like, he may not wake up. And, yeah, she makes her way to the fortress somehow, right as the Eradicator shows up. And, well, the Eradicator feels like there's too late for Superman's body to do anything. So, she offers herself, saying, use me. And event of this unconvincing, she does, and he does, and she now has all the power of the eradicator. But this is all her, he's not influencing her as far as we can tell. This is her playing off of her grief that she plans on doing to make the world a better place. And she basically starts doing all the things she, that Superman never would, making more drastic changes. Making people start to fear her more. She's ready to attack. Basically wondering, like, I crush their... Like, I don't hold back. And as they do more and more, I can't help but think, why didn't you? Again, her grief is just consuming her. As eventually she finds one of the things deals with Lex. Who, again, red haired Lex, who... Yeah. We gotta remember, this does have to be Lex Jr. That's one thing I think Dan Selfless got a little bit off. He portrayed that this is still regular Lex, but no, he's supposed to be like, oh, that wasn't me, that was my father. But, then again, I guess he decided that, um, eh, subterfuge has done it, but Lois grabs them, pulls them into space, and then burns them in the atmosphere, which is actually pretty amazing. Then she decides to now go around to the world, going to Gotham and killing the Joker, and 
I like the artwork. How his chin is still all bony. As Batman shows up, asking what did she do? And again, we're getting the ideology, uh, ideological argument. And he's trying to talk her down, but it, even Batman won't. So, yeah, Batman says, I don't stop. No, you don't. They go in for the final, the final fight. It doesn't last long. It's Lois just vaporizes him. Eventually, you now, um, she starts to feel like you were too afraid. Again, she's going into that hall now. She's denying things. She's trying to rationalize in her mind, not realizing then that, yeah, the man she loved is not what she saw, at least not in this version. As now, we catch up now to the rain as the other Supermen show up. And she starts to deal with Cyborg, who taunts her, basically saying how, I didn't have to put any blood on the ass shield. You've done plenty of that enough as it is. And then Cyborg and Superboy show up, but they're taken out re way too quickly. I mean, I get it, it's supposed to be like, again, a dark white app, so they're trying to speed it up, but yeah, Lois is pissed as she goes in and fights him more, but then it causes a building to fall until Superman shows up. Turns out he wasn't fully dead. It just took a lot longer for him to recover. And at first he's happy for her. You know, confused, but feels like um, things are going to be okay. Until he realizes everyone's afraid of her. Why are they afraid? And she is just so upset, like, no, no, I don't want you to see this. Then, again, a bit cut cheat, and doing a cheat. Um, Cyborg Superman takes the, um, the kryptonite core and is ready to shoot at it. But, unlike the Eradicator who took the blast and converted it to energy, those just fly straight at it, setting off the kryptonite. Her human DNA saving her, but killing Clark right after she gained him back again. And by all the last thing he was, um, the look on his face was this look of terror, horrified at what she had become. And basically she's like, you came back, gave me one more miracle, and I killed you. And it ends there. And, yeah, there's no vengeance. Only the dark. And, I gotta say, as I, oh, sorry. I mean, this was pretty damn good. This actually does match how what was was at that point to a degree but even then no she still held the same idea but this being a dark multiverse clearly this is the lowest who feels more way more cynical going into things it matched a lot of the beats again i'm glad they kept red hair lex but i'm not happy that they ignore the fact that he's supposed to be posing out of the sun you know things like that but again it touched on a lot of the bases and the end is just so tragic the fact that she fell so far and then when he showed up, she realized, like, no, I don't want you to know what I did. Because she that tells you deep down she knew she did wrong. She didn't care. That could have been the cyborg's influence, but one girl say it was still the grief as well. So, yeah, a bit shorter on this one, but I think the others are going to be shorter, too. I think I went a little way too long with the last one. But this was really good. And that's all I really got to say was... It's good. They're all good. So, no, but tomorrow's is going to be the weaker one. The, but weaker by comparison to the lot. As tomorrow, we're going to go over Day of the Dark Multiverse, Black as Night. Again, it's not bad. It's just that by comparison to the others, it would be on the bottom. But I would say that Death of Superman is the second best. What is the best? We'll get to that. Until then, I'll catch you guys later.